Hey everyone, I just want to make a quick how-to video on making a snake tub rack. Um, I used a three-quarter white melamine and um, half-inch black melamine back. Um, the back was to get some shading to the back area of the tubs. And I used a three-inch uh, HTG um, heat tape, like the FlexWatt. Um, and it's a, this particular rack is for um, about a 12-quart tub that I picked up from Walmart. Um, I use them because <clears throat> they're really easy to get, you know, right down the street. So if I need any more, I can, I can grab them. I have these four here because I was just uh, testing it out, testing the fit, making sure as I'm making it, everything was going to go right. So this is pretty much it. <clears throat> Hopefully this video will show you uh, or give you some ideas on how to do it yourself. Um, I try to give as many details as I could, but make the video not too long and drawn out. So if you got any other questions, um, just let me know. I'll try and answer them. I appreciate you watching. And here's how I did it. Okay, after you've cut all your pieces uh, to size, <clears throat> you're going to want to um, put an edge banding on it. To cover it up, you know, cover up the uh, rough, the raw edges, and they sell this, you know, usually in a roll, and uh, it's got hot melt glue on the back of it. So you just need a home iron um, to heat it up and stick it on in a scrap block to um, rub it down after you stick it, and it'll you know, pull the heat out of it, let the um, uh, hot melt glue uh, cool quickly, and it'll bond quickly. I'll show you how to do that, and then I'll show you how you file the edge off. It doesn't take uh, very long for it to, uh, to heat up. So this actually, this process goes pretty quickly. Just kind of make sure the whole thing is heated up. <clears throat> you don't want to overheat it. You don't want to cook it. Depending how hot your iron is, how long you're going to leave it on. And then just take a block and rub along. Put a little pressure on the heel. Just so you get good pressure down on the tape. And I just put a little slight pressure on each edge to just to bond the edge as good as I can. <clears throat> And I flipped the block over. That was just to get uh, a cool surface that helps uh, cool the tape down quicker. So once you're done with that, um, you'll have it bonded on there pretty well. And then you just need a file to uh, clean up the edge. And I just use a regular flat file it's got uh, ridges on the edge of it as well as the face. And you can just kind of run along here. And just kind of feel for it. You'll get a feel for how, how much you need to file. And that's pretty that's pretty good there. And then just do the other side. Is it really easy to do? So now that all the edges are completed, the next step would be to um, mark out where the heat tape is going to run up each shelf. So I'll start by uh, taking a tub that I'm going to use for this rack. This is about where the back would be, so I'll push it up against there. And I'll mark where I want the back of the heat tape to be. And I'm going to be using a 3 inch um, heat tape here. 
So I know I want to have a slot or a groove in the edge of the shelf so that this can pass through. That's at least three inches. But what I'm going to do is, um, I know three inch will work, but just in the off chance that I would need four inches, I'll actually go a little bit more because a, a little bigger slot isn't going to hurt anything. So I know I'm going to groove out the edge of this shelf about four, maybe four and a quarter inches wide. That'll give me plenty of play in here so I can do a final adjustment of where I want the heat tape to be um, to the tub. So we would probably be you know, sitting in that vicinity right there. So that gives a nice heat spot, a like hot spot in the back. So next I'll show you how I cut the slots in each edge of this uh, shelf here. Okay, so what I've done here is I've had a router set up to cut the notch out along the edge here. I set up two stops. One will start my cut when I drop in, and the next one will end my cut so I can come back out, and that will leave me with a nice clean um, cutout, about a heavy sixteenth, a light eighth, something like that, um, and all consistent. I marked each piece with a black line because they alternate as the flex watt goes through. It will go right to left with each shelf, so we, uh, we need to make sure we do the opposites because I pick the best edge to be up. And if I cut it on the wrong side, then I might end up with kind of a not so good cut on a top edge that I, I don't want to see that. So I'll show you how that works. is cut out. Um, what I want to do is, this is a really sharp edge, so I want to round that edge over because when the heat tape comes through, I don't want anything sharp to be rubbing against it. So what I'm going to do is I set up with a small round over or ease bit. Then I'm going to just run along this groove right here on the top and on the bottom. That way if anything uh, catches it, it, it won't hurt it. Now I just have the six shelves. I have eight all together, but there's only six interior shelves that the tape's going to be running through. So the top and bottom are left without uh, slots. So you can see it puts a nice round edge on it. Be nice and friendly to anything rolling around. I'll just finish up the rest of them now. Okay, the next step will be to start um, laying out where the shelves are going to go so we can pre-drill holes um, up the sides so we can screw our shelves in. So the first thing we want to do is I don't want to screw to come in where the heat tape is going to be. So I, know I need to make sure that my screw is set back enough. So I took a pair of these scribes and I'll just, you know, mark it so that's a, maybe a quarter inch in from where the slot is. So my screw will go in at this point right here. And I'll mirror the same thing on the other side. So what I can do is I have my, both of my sides here marked bottom, and the insides are facing up. 
So this would be an outside, inside, inside, outside. So, is it over so I can work with it. And I'm going to take that scribe and I'm going to just mark a line. I'm going to run it all the way down the panel. And I'm going to do that on both of them. There. Now that tells me where my screws need to be up and down. But then for the bottom, the bottom shelf I'm going to have sit right on the bottom edge. So if it's three-quarter material, that means I want my screw halfway. So that would be three-eighths of an inch. So that's where my first screw is going to be. So again, you can take your scribes and you know, just get yourself a mark here, and then you come over to this side, make a mark. Same thing on the other side. And that's going to locate our four holes to put in the bottom shelf. Um, I don't think we're going to need a third hole in the middle. Uh, that might be a little bit overkill. I think this might handle it. And I'll show you the screws I'm going to use um, and I think they hold pretty well. Um, so we're going to put the bottom shelf in. After we, we pre-drill the holes, we'll put the bottom shelf in and then we'll start measuring up where each successive shelf goes. And then we'll pre-drill all of those holes and they'll be pretty close to where they need to be and then we'll actually put in spacers between each shelf as we work our way up the cabinet. So let me get a drill and we'll start pre-drilling these holes here so we can assemble it. Okay, and this is the screw we're going to use right here. It's called a power head screw. It's got a square drive, big flat head on it that'll pull the material in tight. If you're going to use a drywall screw, something like that, I probably would use a third one, but these things pull really well. Um, I buy these from uh, McFeely's. I'm going to pre-drill with an eighth inch bit. And I'm going to use the same bit through the sides, and then I'm going to come back through and drill into the bottom with that bit after I get it clamped together. That way the screw is sure to find this, the right hole. I'll be lined up. Okay, so now what I'm going to do to measure the spacing in between each shelf is I'm going to put the tub down on a piece, put a uh, piece of Formica, this is just a sixteenth of an inch Formica scrap, I'm going to put one on each side. I've seen people use CDs, which is probably about the same thickness. And then you lay the shelf down on top. And push it back a little bit. And you can kind of measure up. You can see exactly what your spacer would need to be. At this, this tub is five and five eighths of an inch. So I'll cut a spacer five and five eighths of an inch, one for each side. Put the bottom in and then use my spacer to do every other one. But before I do that, I'll go ahead and take that measurement and mark each hole all the way up so that I already have the, drill, uh, the holes pre-drilled. Okay, I'm going to cut the spacers now. I've got the fence set for five and five eighths. I got a couple of pieces of scrap here. They look like they're just a little bit too big, so I'll go ahead and cut those down. <laughs>
Okay, so now that I have my spacers cut, and I cut it out of three quarter inch material, so that's the same thickness that I'm using, so the white and the black are both the same thickness. So I'm going to use this piece um, to simulate the bottom shelf, and then this will be my spacer. That was five and uh, five eighths. So I'm just going to flush up the bottom here, push this tight, and I know that my first hole right here is three-eighths up. It's in the center of this piece here. So I'm going to pull that back. That means that the next shelf up will be in this area, which means three-eighths above this line is where I want the next hole. So if I bring this back here, we can see if I have this flush on the bottom, I push this up three-eighths of an inch, it's on the edge of the hole, that means this will be on the edge of the hole also. So that total distance is going to be six and three-eighths of an inch. So now I know that since I have my first hole drilled here, I know that every six and three-eighths of an inch up this line that we struck, I'm going to have another hash mark and that's going to be where my next hole is. I'm going to come up six and three-eighths that's going to be where the next hole is. I'm going to do this on both sides, get all the holes drilled, then we can start putting it together. Okay, now I've got all the holes drilled. And I'll show you what I did. I took a piece of, uh, this happens to be um, some angle aluminum. You can use anything. I, I just happen to use this. You can use a wood stick. And I marked out the uh, hole location along this hole, I don't know if you can see it there, along the whole bar. So that would show me where each hole was. So I knew where my first one was. So I put the first line, if you can see that first line, right at the bottom. And as I came up, I marked where the next hole would be. And the next one, and the next one, and so on. So we got all the way to the top. That way I only had to measure once and then I used it to transfer all of the other holes along the uh, sides. That way you only have to measure once but you need to measure uh, you need to measure correctly because you're off just a little bit um, things are going to screw up. Your screw is going to end up coming um, out of your shelf either too high or too low so if you uh, pay attention to anything while you're building something like this it's pay attention to your marks and double check make sure they're all exactly what they're supposed to be double check as many times as you need to because uh, once you drill the holes that's it hopefully I did it right so what we'll do now is we're going to um, go ahead and I'll show you how to assemble them. Okay. So I'm going to start with this side. I'll just push that one out of the way. <clears throat> and then here's my bottom. This is going to go right along here. I also um, washed all the lines off of here while I had it because once uh, it's all put together, it's really hard you know, to get in there and clean everything. So I wiped all the lines off because I don't need them anymore. And the bottom mark that I had, I made sure when I wrote it, I wrote it so that it, when I put the bottom on, it would be covered. So that won't show either. Not that it matters. So I'm gonna set this on edge. And then I want these two to be flush because I want that to, uh, to look nice. Then I'm going to use a clamp. To hold it together while I uh, pre-drill the holes. So I'll just flush everything up here on the bottom. Make sure the top is good. There, that way when I pre-drill nothing will move. Again, here's the screw that I'm using. It's like a two and a quarter inch power head screw. 
It's got a square drive on it. It takes an eighth inch uh, drill bit to pre-drill the hole. You want to pre-drill this stuff because otherwise it's going to crack on you as soon as you put a screw into it. So you've got to make sure you pre-drill it. And if you pre-drill, and that's pre-drill into the piece that you're going to screw into, the piece that the screw goes through, sometimes you make that hole a little bit bigger. Um, if you do that, then sometimes the uh, pilot bit that goes into your shelf maybe won't be exactly where it needs to be because it can wiggle in the bigger hole. So I usually use the pilot bit that's supposed to go into here. I use that to go through here too because that makes sure that I, I stay straight all the way in, that I always hit my mark. And then usually your uh, screws have some flat area up in here that's just going to end up spinning out anyway. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to draw real nice. And that's just a little trick. So I'll show you how that works. And then uh, my drill bit is set so it doesn't go quite as far in. It won't matter if it if the screw has to go in without a hole this little bit extra. It just gives it a little extra bite. Once it's down inside the shelf it's not going to hurt anything. The main part is drilled out so and that goes in, the screws in, It'll have a nice bite, and you just drill until it doesn't go any further, and you're done. You put the screw in. And I pulled it tight. So I'll just make sure I'm going to drop the clamp down to do the next one. So I got a good tight fit down there. this up. So you can see those screws hold pretty good. The seam is nice and tight. So, yeah, so I don't think we need a third screw that might be just a little bit overkill. But I'll get the other one on and then I'll show you how we stack them. Okay, now before we screw the shelves on, um, I've got the heat tape that comes up around this little notch that we cut. It comes up out of the, the bottom area like this and comes around. Um, this is going to want to, you know, push up and when you tape it down, it's going to want to push the tape up over time. So I came up with this little uh, strip right here to help kind of tame the bend in the uh, heat tape so we can we can screw that down. It doesn't have to be tight. In fact, I leave them loose a little bit so that the, the tape has a little wiggle room in there. I don't, I don't crank it down. So um, this piece that I've got here, it's a non-conductive piece of plastic. It's, it's a, looks like it's not quite an eighth of an inch thick. And what it is, it's a uh, piece of track that um, sliding door hardware uh, rides on and you can I'm not sure um, I've, I've had this for a while so I've had a bunch of it I cut it up and it seemed to work pretty good for this application um, I'm assuming that you can get it at the hardware store or order it online or you can probably come up with something on your own like I said it's just uh, non-conductive I just didn't want anything like metal um, hitting against the heat tape I'm not sure if that's bad for it or not, but I guess it's uh, better safe than sorry. So um, they're all pre-drilled. 
um, for a little black screw that's going to go in here and screw it down. Um, so we're just going to, it's easier to pre-drill the holes for these um, now than after all the shelves are in the cabinet because you only have like it's about five and a half inches in between each shelf and it's kind of a tight area to work in. Um, so what I did is I I just made like a little jig that's got a couple holes in it here and, and over here that correspond with these holes in this plastic strip. And so I'm just going to clamp this on It doesn't even matter if it's not perfect, you know, it's, um, because it's just holding down this little plastic strip. It's not critical exactly where it goes. And so I have the, again, the, the drill bit is set to go through this right here and then just far enough to pre-drill for the screw. I'll do that on the top of each shelf. So now those holes line up right there. I don't know if you can see that. And then they'll be easy to screw in later. So I'll just I'll pre-drill all the holes, then I'll assemble the cabinet, and then when I'm running the heat tape, I'll uh, I'll attach one screw like uh, in here run the heat tape and then just kind of flip this over and put the next screw down and just hold the heat tape. Just kind of tames that heat tape as it's running back and forth through the cabinet. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill all the rest of these shelves and I think at that point we can start assembling. Okay, I think we're, start, uh, we're ready to start putting together. So we've got our spacers. I'm going to drop a spacer in on each side. And we'll grab a shelf and drop it in. Push it flush. And we just press down and hold. Having that hole the same exact size as this bit keeps us from drifting around when we're pre-drilling for the screw. Okay. So, my tub works well, not too much play. So we're in good shape. We got room for two of them. I think we have 14 all together. All right, I'll get the rest of these put together and uh, take it from there.
Okay, so now I have all the shelves installed. You can see all the screws in the side. And I'm getting ready to uh, line up the back so that I can screw it on. I'm just going to screw it on temporarily because I'm going to take it back off to put the uh, heat tape in. But I'll show you what I did. You can see right here is I've uh, cut a notch for the cord to come out for the heat tape. And I've rounded over the edges uh, inside. You'll be able to see it better a little later. But you can see there's a little curve on the edges there. That just uh, to keep any sharp edges away from the cord where it comes out. And this is the top. There's You can see the recess. Uh, that's so I can set things on top and it won't roll off. So um, what I'm going to do is... Just mark um, down the edge where I want to place a few screws, and like I said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put a whole lot of screws in there. Just uh, just a few to hold it on. It's not real structural. So, um, and what I'm gonna use is um, these screws. I'll show you. Okay, so these are the screws. They're inch and a half, and um, I'm gonna use this bit that will countersink and pre-drill at the same time. So all I have to do is clamp the back on, then I can drill the hole and then put the screw right in while it's clamped up and everything will hold tight. Then when I take it back off, put it back on, it'll go back in the same place. Um, another thing I forgot to mention is you notice that I have a black back on the white cabinet and that was, um, let me get focused here, that's to make it a little darker in the back of the um, rack so it's just a little better for the snakes to to chill out back there not as much light reflecting with the white back so I used the white backs before and it just seems a little bright back there so I think I'm just gonna stick with the black backs and it's just a half inch back whereas the rest of the uh, the rest of the cage is uh, three quarter you can see the difference in the thickness there so Anyway, let me dock up here and I'll show you how I do this. Okay. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to drill on my mark. That's pretty much it. I'll go ahead and um, finish this up and then I'm going to take all the screws out, pull the back off, and then I'll show you how I do the heat tape. Okay, I took the back off and now I'm putting all the strips that I was talking about earlier that hold, help hold the heat tape down. I'm starting to screw them on now. So, um, probably if you don't have a screw gun that's got an angle on it that you can reach in between here it's probably a little easier to do it before you put the shelves in um, and then just tighten them down by hand uh, later I just leave this one free until I get the heat tape in all this this end I'll leave free and as I'm winding the tape around I'll just kind of flip this over top and help hold it in place I'll finish these up and then we'll start putting the tape in okay so this is the uh, I got THG heat tape from um, uh, reptile basics so uh, I needed about 17 and a half feet so I ordered 17 feet three inch and I went ahead and had them um, put the electrical cord on it so it's supposed to be already attached so that's it I'll get it unrolled and then we'll start feeding it um, 
through the uh, rack. Okay, so I'm going to start from the top. Um, and this um, THG tape doesn't have a, like a top and bottom. They look different, but the uh, directions, you know, they pretty much say, you know, it doesn't matter which way you have it. So you can kind of wind it through here. So I'm just going through the slot, and I'll just work my way down and let this kind of unroll as I'm going. And then what I'll do is I'll flip these around and put the screw in, put this around, put the screw in. Like I said, I wasn't, I wouldn't hold it real tight, clamp down, just enough to, to keep the tape down. Because I think if you used uh, like the um, regular tape on the edge, which I'm going to put on here, but um, if you just let that hold it down, eventually I think it's going to want to start pulling up like this. So that's the reason I made these things, just, just to kind of keep it in check. And it doesn't put too much of a bend to it, so I think it'll be fine. I've done it before and it doesn't seem to be a problem. Okay, so I'm at the point where I'm taping the uh, heat tape down and I'm using the metallic tape. And I'm taping just to the, um, to the edge here, like the directions say. I've seen people have it kind of cover up here and, um, and I don't know if that's good bad but I know the manufacturer says to you know put the tape like right on the edge like that so that's what I'm doing and uh, to hold the tape down I'm using some blue painters tape it comes off easy holds it in place because otherwise it tends to bubble up like this while you're taping it makes it kind of tough and I just use this little square to to gauge how far back I am because I want to kind of keep it consistent all the way down so it's sitting in the right place for the tub. So I'll show you how I put this on. I just try and center it up best I can. Once I got it to that point, I use the back side of the um, paper from the tape. And I use that to kind of smooth everything down. It just helps it um, level out real nice. And after I get there, I'll take the blue painter's tape off. Get my next piece. Same thing, kind of centered up. Use the back side of the paper. If you can avoid the creases in the metal tape, it just the tubs will slide a little, a little smoother. Give you a close up of what we've done. So you can see how I have that there with the um, the strips that kind of hold down, yeah, you know, the bubbling tape. So I'll just finish up these last two, and uh, and we'll be done. Okay, when I got to the end. Um, I had this much extra, so you have to cut it off to length, but I didn't want to cut it until I've got it all fed all the way through. So you cut it off um, where you want it to end there, and then you have to remember to um, put electrical tape on these ends to uh, insulate them before you go any further. Uh, don't leave them open. So. Okay, so we're all done with the heat tape. You can see where I've taped on where the cord comes out. 
uh, just keep it in place. And you can see where I've uh, insulated the ends of that piece right there. And I didn't use the uh, black plastic strap that goes across there because it's not going to bubble up. I'll save it for the next one. Now just throw the back on and uh, that should pretty much be it. Okay, so I got the back on. It's all finished. And I just wanted to show how I cut that back out for the cord. Um, just leaves enough room to get the thermostat uh, in there. Rounded edges so it doesn't cut the cord. That'll pretty much do it. Got my trial tub right there. You can see how the black back kind of darkens up the back area there. That's what I was after. Well, anyway, I hope the video helped. And uh, go ahead and email me any questions you have or any tips. You see, I did something that uh, I could have done better. Just let me know. I'd appreciate the input. Thanks a lot.